Anybody's agree? Mm -hmm. I agree. B division? Oh, All right. <laughs> Mother? We agree? Yep. Amen. All right. Ladybug? All right. What are some results of taking communion in an unworthy manner? And I said, A, damnation. Uh, yeah, damnation leads to sickness, death, or be all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say? A. 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 A and E. Let's go what? Let's go to the word. Eleven twenty-seven. What's that say? What? Oh, Which is what? Eat all, all of the above. Sonia, you got the last one? I disagree? Yeah. All right. Cool. We got one left. Yeah. One left. Why we got one left? Because you read 59. You, all right, Mike. That's it. That's it. I was done. What is the purpose of op operations of the in the church? For the common to profit with all. For common good. What is the purpose of operation of gifts, gifts in the church? 12 7. So that everybody profits. In other words, share your gift. Yeah. Whatever your gift is, share, right? Yeah. I shared mine. Yes, you did. Your, and your gift. That's why we all have water. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no one can play. No, 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 no one can ever say I'm not in the hospital. Right, it falls under help. <laughs> help yourself. <laughs> I'll lock it back. Thank you. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> All right, who wants to pray? Yes, sir. Who wants to pray? We're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians, right? Verse, uh, chapter 14. Anybody want to pray? Father God, we thank you for another another Wednesday. We thank you for opening our hearts.
heart. The mind is that the word is accepted in my spirit and it's accepted to apply it in my life. Help us always to keep your glory and the wonderful things that you've done for us and the forgiveness that you have for us in the four parts of our mind. Help us to walk in the fruit of the spirit day by day. Help us in all we do. Amen. 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 All right, we're still dealing with the Corinthian church. Everybody already knows what the Corinthian church was like, right? This church was blessed. It had all the spiritual gifts. It had the teachings of Paul. It had all this stuff, and they still got it wrong. So it's quite possible that uh, it's, it's easy to fall away. It's so easy to fall away as a church. And one of the things that Paul is going to be talking about or addressing in this chapter is tongues. And that's, this is a very controversial subject. Um, some of us have dealt with this and some of us haven't. But I will tell you that um, <clears throat> they, the, the first time we hear about tongues, and I, 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 I want to try to say it in a different way, instead of tongues, I want to say language. It's, it would be easier for everybody to comprehend if I said language. Uh, I will tell everybody this, and, and I'm going to read this. Uh, the, what we have is the modern Pentecostal charismatic movement, yes. which started in about eight, uh, 19, early 1900s. A whole, new, a whole new denomination is what it is. Okay, and it was started by a, a name, a man named William Joseph Seymour. He, he lived from May 2nd to 1880. 1870, and he died on September 28th of 1922. Uh, according to uh, uh, the encyclopedia, he was an African man, African American holiness preacher who initiated Azusa, Azusa Street. Street Revival. Okay, he initiated this an influential event that had the rise of the Pentecostal and Charismatic movement. He was the second of eight children born to an emancipated slave and raised Catholic in extremely poverty, poverty in Louisiana. Seymour was a student of early Pentecostal minister Charles Parham, and he adopted Parham's belief in speaking in tongues as a sign to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In 1906, Seymour moved to Los Angeles, California, where he preached the Pentecostal message and sparked the Azuzu Street Revival. The revival drew large crowds of believers as well as media coverage and focus on the controversial religious practice as well as the radical integrated worship service which violated the radical norm for the time. Seymour's leadership of the revival and publication of the Apostle of Faith newspaper launching the prominence of the young Pentecostal movement and Seymour broke with Parr in 1906 over the theological differences as well as Parr's unhappiness with interracial revival meetings. So we kind of see where the beginning of the Pentecostal movement is. The Pentecostal movement started around this time. So Pentecostals don't go all the way back to you know the time of Christ. This is just a new movement. Now you can you can probably understand that if if you have a church and you are charismatic that you place speaking in tongues and the gifts of the spirit at high, you know, high up in, the, in, 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 in what you're preaching and teaching about, I mean, that's gonna cause a lot of people to come. Right. And that's exactly what it did. The church just started growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So, I mean, you can do more research on this guy, but we can trace the Pentecostal charismatic movement back to him and people like him around the same time. What does that mean? Huh? I don't think they did. Why? They didn't give it the, the fruit. The, the, they didn't give it the gospel. The tongue is just on the forefront. Okay, so, all right, so let, let, let's go back to the original first uh, time that anybody spoke in a different, I'm not going to say tongues, but it was. Language. Language. Acts chapter 2.
Okay, so anybody know what, what Acts chapter 2 is? Day of Pentecost. Day of Pentecost. How many days after Passover? Five. Fifty. Oh, yeah. Check the verse. Oh. <clears throat> All right, I'll start with verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, chapter 1 tells us that Jesus had already went to heaven in the cloud, right? They were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there, there was a sound from heaven as a rushing, mighty wind. And, and Jesus had told them to go back to Jerusalem. Okay, and stay there until, and it was filled all the house where they were sitting, this rush, mighty rushing wind. And there appeared on them clothes of tongues, like as a fire, and it what? So Jews need a sign, don't they? Yes. To believe. Okay, this is their sign. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other languages or tongues, but the Bible says tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, and they that were dwelled in Jerusalem, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Right? So there, there were people there from where? And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and was confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So we went from tongues to what? So what does that mean? If there if there are men from every nation, right? They're the language that they that they would speak would they be their native. Their native. And when I say native, what do I mean? Like yeah. their home. Okay. So if you were from Egypt and you were a Jew and you were here, in order to do business with people in Egypt, you probably spoke Egyptian. Right? And that would be that's where you live, that's where you grow, that's where you do your business, that's where your house is. So that would be considered what? Your native. Oh, like or tongue, okay. So everybody that was there heard them speak in their own native language. So from from Spain, what do I hear them speaking? Spanish, right? Greeks, Greek. So everybody heard them speak in their own. Now this ain't hard for God to do. Because at the Tower of Babel, what did he do? So all he did was reverse what he did at the Tower of Babel, right? So why would God want to be able to provide this miracle so that everybody from every country could hear the gospel preached in their own language? Why? Why would he want that? So I, I've never... I've, the only time I ever, if I would go back to that, the only time I ever come to Jerusalem is Passover and Pentecost. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I don't even know the Hebrew language or Arabic language. All I know is what I've been raised, right? But then I come here and I hear Peter speaking in my own native language. I'm like, whoa, what is this? Because Peter doesn't know anything about what? I'm sure Peter does not know any other language other than Maybe Hebrew and possibly. Possibly, but I doubt it. I think I think Peter's more of a what would we say? Just a common folk. Oh. Okay, so so we see from Acts chapter two. Okay, let's let's keep let's keep reading. Uh, Warren, how about seven, eight, nine? <clears throat> and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born Parthians, Medes Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, 
and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Ten. Seven. Perga, Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, of Libya, Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome. Strangers of Rome. <laughs> Jews and proselytes. Yep. Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. Do you think this was a dervish? Or do you think this was a language? language? And not just one. Yes. <laughs> not just one. Not many. So everybody heard in their own language. So when you hear a Pentecostal speak what they say in tongues, what does that sound like? Gibberish. Is that a language? It's not a language? No. Why not? Who understands it? I, I kind of want to be sensitive. If there are any Pentecostals who grew up in the Pentecostal, because we'll read on down later that the Pentecostals will say it, it is a language to God. Okay. But who does it edify? We'll get to that. <laughs> and and we have people in this church who you'll find you'll you'll see them speak in tongues. Yes. Okay. And you'll say to yourself, okay, what did you just say? Right? Because right. we don't know. Right. But these people, what did they hear? What did they understand? They understood exactly what, what, what was being said. said. And not only did they understand exactly what was being said, they understand exactly in their their language. Right. So if I would if, if, if I begin to speak to everybody right now in Spanish, how many people would understand me? One, two, so. How about French? <laughs> but the point is, is if I can't speak to you and communicate to you, then it's a waste of speech. I have to be able to communicate what? What am I trying to communicate to you? Everyone. The gospel. The gospel. Right? So I have to reach you where you're at. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the purpose of this. And it was also, according to the Old Testament, and I don't have the scripture, but it was a sign that God was now moving not only from the Jews, but to the Gentiles. All right. So. And, and verse 12 says, uh, verse 12 and 13. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Okay, so there was another group of people that they were amazed, but they, they didn't, what? They didn't believe. Mm -hmm. So since they didn't believe, you don't get it. Right, thought they were drunk. Right, so if I don't believe, then the word is not going to penetrate to me. Right? right? And they said, well, they'll, they'll, so they just said, oh, this is their drum. So there was a group of herd in their own language, and there's another group of people who were in doubt. Well, yeah, or uh, because of their doubt, they didn't believe, so they didn't hear. Now, how would this help if all of us went to a country where we don't know the language and began to preach the gospel? God gave us the ability to preach in their native language. So we would benefit, wouldn't we? Yes, sir. Right? Okay. All right, so let's let's go back to Corinthians. We does it, do anybody have any questions? Because I mean <clears throat> yes. What's why did they make a distinction and say new wine? <laughs> That's a good question. Warren laughs, or Warren knows. Go ahead, Warren. <laughs> Well, if it was old wine, they would be drunk. New wine denotes something else. Mm -hmm. and they're yet to be discovered. So we remember, remember the uh, new wine and old skins and old wine and yes. new skins. So what, what what does that tell us? You put if you try to put new wine, old skins, so yes. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Okay, so it's like 
talking and telling you the audience like what was your pain to love. When people do it, like what is it actually happening? How do I just explain it? You know, when we have yeah, people who are just telling you to speak to them, like, yeah, oh, and then they get turned like, oh, it's like, what did you say? Right? So I'm trying to okay. know, like what you said. Okay, so what we're gonna do is then, so what we what we want to really do is just stay close to the scripture. So what do we know from reading Acts? What do we know about that? If we stay real close to the scripture, what do we know? It was authentic. It wasn't you know gibberish and nonsense. Like it is today. So so in Acts, it was a language. It was like French, Spanish, Egyptian. It was a language that they heard. It had purpose. Hmm? So if I don't understand, it had a purpose. Had a purpose, yeah. yeah. And if I don't understand someone speaking in tongues, like, is that bad for, for me? Am I, if I don't understand them, like, I'm going to I don't understand them either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and nobody in this room does. We, we yeah. are supposed to have an interpreter. Yeah, well, and see, we're, we're, that's why we got to <laughs> ease on down this road. <laughs> okay. We're going to ease on down this road. I felt bad for my son. Like, oh, I don't understand. I don't know what I mean. I'm like, what's up, song? I'm sorry. And I don't know what it's like, amen, because I don't know what you just said. What? So, that what that is addressed in the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. But the other thing, too, when we read Acts 2, it says all the places that the people were from. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he spoke and every one of them heard it in their that own language, language right? no matter where it came, where they were from, that says that it had to be a language that everybody could understand. You know, and yeah, so. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, you know, so so hence the word uh, psychopath. Yeah, but you ever heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> right. That, that that is that's derived actually from the Tower of Babel when he yeah. when he confounded the languages. Yeah. yeah. So that's where that's where psychopath came yeah. from. So okay. when they, when people are talking in their tongues, that's yeah, what I interpret that as. Psychopath. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so these were languages unknown to Peter, but known. <clears throat> Understand? Right. Peter didn't study all these different languages, but he he was gifted by the Spirit to speak in a language that all these Jews could understand. Okay, so God was moving. That's the critical piece right there that is always not um, spoken of. It says, "As the Spirit gave but them utterance, as the Spirit." So this was a spiritual thing, mm -hmm. right? It was not them. They didn't do any trickery or anything, uh, right? So this is that. That is the piece for me that made, made this. The this is a spiritual thing. This is a God spiritual. Is doing. This is a top. This is the like the Jews want a sign. Mm -hmm. So if you were a Jew back there and you you were from one of these countries and that was your sign right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand now. So, so every every year I've been coming to. Passover and Pentecost, and they're speaking a language I have no idea what they're talking about. But I know I'm supposed to be here because the Bible tells me I'm supposed to be here. But now all of a sudden, Peter's talking. I understand. Like, whoa, okay, right? Okay. So now, 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 what I want to say is, there's a group of people who've been taught that that, that this is a language. But let's let let let's let Paul address it because. Now, if you were in Corinthians, which was what? Two harbors on either side? People from all over what? The world would be coming. Yeah. So would it be beneficial to be able to speak a language that you didn't know from somebody who's come from wherever? Yeah. Right? So God had really blessed his church. They just were using all the gifts, what? Incorrectly. Could you imagine? And especially as bad as this, as Corinthians was, right? Two harbors on each side? You could preach. <laughs> Wouldn't be hard to find somebody to preach to. Okay, so let's go to First Corinthians. Uh, so it's a mess as usual, okay? It's gonna be a mess. Okay. So first thing we talked about is Azusa, Azusa Street. Mm -hmm. Talked about this guy William. Talked about. I mean, you could do more research on it as you if you want. Yeah, there's somebody else that. Yeah. So this this is this is something new that's coming out that came out in like the early 1900s. This is this is a new doctrine. Prior to that, there is no there's no uh, indication anywhere of any 
people speaking like this prior to this. Okay. All right, so here it is. Uh, Mike, 14.1. Follow, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Okay, in other words, follow after love, right? All right, every gift should, should have to be done what? In love, right? So it says, desire what? Spiritual gifts. It's okay to desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may so in other words, Paul, Paul is saying prophesying is a good gift if you want to desire. And what prophesying does is divine speaking and it edifies the church. Okay, what, what do I mean by edify? It builds, up. It builds up, okay. In other words, if, 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 I, if, if someone is given the ability to have inspirational truth about the Bible, then it will lift everybody. Especially if, especially if you understand. And then he says in verse 2, uh, Deacon Dave, what is it verse 2 say? But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. This is one of the uh, verses I, I believe that Pentecostals like to use. Yeah, this one uh, well, this is the one that uh, it's so confusing that, that but it's so easy. Okay, so let me try my best. Uh, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, okay, or a language, right? In other words, there's nobody that understands this language but this guy who's speaking it. Speaking not unto who? Because there's nobody in the, in the, the, that understands what he's saying. So if I'm speaking Korean, you guys won't understand. So it's an unknown language, right? So if I'm not speaking to men, who am I speaking to? God, for no man understandeth him, right? Nobody understands Korean. Albeit the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. In other words, the spirit understands every language, so he speaks. But where the Pentecostals will say, they'll say that this is a, when I speak in tongues, it's it's a godly language. Huh? And it's to him, so that I, I, I'm okay at speaking. So they use this they use this verse very effectively. Okay. But look what the Bible says. But, but Paul's addressing this because he says in verse 3, but he that prophesies or edifies the church, speaking to who? Okay. To edification and exhortation and comfort. So I mean, which is what's the best gift? Prophesy. He that speaketh an unknown tongue, an unknown tongue. Edifies who? So that points, in other words, you're saying, look at me. I speak Korean. Huh? Yeah, or, or full of pride. Hey, y'all, look, I speak Korean. Can you? No, you can't. But I can, and I do. So in this culture, in this church, can you imagine what that would do if you're the only one who speaks Korean? You'd be walking around like what? I am holy. I have been touched by God. I have been blessed. Right? Because remember, this church is what? They're all messed up. So they're going to take something and they're going to use it for, right? So Paul says, now, anybody know how many languages Paul spoke? Possibly three or maybe even more. He was a Roman citizen, so he spoke Roman or Italian. He also spoke what? Arabic. Anybody else want to guess? Greek. Greek, right? Now, why, why would that make him the perfect person to traverse the whole all of Europe, huh? Because he could spread it out. And how many? At least. At least three different languages. So somebody somewhere would, would be able to understand. Yeah. Right? God chose the perfect person. Yeah. Yeah. He, perfect. Studied, he studied on he studied under the maybe the one of the most learned uh, scholars on uh, teaching. Humilia. Yeah. Or however you pronounce his name. And Paul was a 
what was he? A Hebrew? From the tribe of Benjamin? Benjamin? Circumcised on the eighth day? His parents were, were so, and he was a Roman citizen. Yes. So he could traverse. Huh? Pharisees. Pharisees. God chose the right person. So, Paul says this in verse 5. He says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, or we'll say languages, but rather that ye prophesy. He said, I'd rather you speak prophesying as opposed to languages. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with well, tongues or language, except he interpret, and the church may receive edifying. So in order for anybody to get anything out of someone speaking with a different language, somebody has to interpret. interpret. Okay. That is one of the things that is necessary. So when you have a when you have somebody in your family who speaks in tongues, they're not supposed to speak in tongues. Not without an interpreter. Not without an interpreter. But because they're speaking in tongues to you, without an interpreter, what does that tell you? What is the Bible just saying? That's just a showy off he did. They're just full of pride. They're trying to impress you. Hmm? So just think about it. Yeah. When I say yabba dabba do, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> what did I just say? How much body would you body? What did I say? I don't even know what I said. But what did, did it edify you? Did it bring anything? Did it, did it, did it, did, David, did, did I, you got anything out of that? Uh, you got what? Nothing out of it. One of the Pentecostal, what? So, speaking in what the Pentecostals call a language to God edifies or benefits me in no way at all. Right? Because I don't understand. And, and you can always find people who want to speak in tongues. You just can't find the people who want to interpret what they just said. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Yeah. I they don't know. They don't do anything because they can't. But, he, but I, I've met people that say they speak and interpret. So it's like. <laughs> but that's not what the Bible says. Right, exactly. It says if you speak, there should be an interpreter. interpreter. But a person speaking, they don't even know what they're saying. You know. What the Bible's saying is there needs to be someone to interpret right, to what right. they just said. So in essence, what it's saying, because it is something that is a spiritual thing and that God, the Holy Spirit, gives, not only does he give you the ability to speak, but he also gives someone the ability to interpret it. And so if you're speaking and no one's interpreting then it is out of balance, out of order. Right. So, so anybody who knows somebody who speaks in tongues, in order for you to speak in tongues, you must have an interpreter. And if you don't have an interpreter, shut up. That's what the Bible says. If you don't have an interpreter, you can't speak in tongues. Yes. I experienced that at a church, which occurred a lot. The Holy Spirit would get, and they would start speaking in tongues. I don't think the Holy Spirit never no one there to interpret what they were saying. I, I don't think the Holy Spirit hit. Okay, well, all right, well, the Holy Spirit, but that's at that time they you know they get to dance and they shout and, and then they start. Well, yeah, that's another. It sounded more like another spirit. Ain't the Holy Spirit? But I didn't know if it was actually speaking in tongues. No, but there was never no one there to to. to uh, interpret what they were saying. Well, there's two people who said they speak in tongues, and one of them interpreted the other one. They should be able to interpret each other. No, there's, there's, it's, it's a different gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, I attended a church one time where the pastor said, I'm going to use pastor, said, uh, go into your prayer language. And they all started speaking in tongues. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. no. So I'm standing there. <laughs> Like, you know, trying to pray in the only language I know fluently. English. And I said, and I said, Lord, I said, 
I'm sorry, I had to stop because I had no idea what I'm even saying. Around. Because it was all confusion. I was so confused. I mean, everybody, and they're, and they're almost screaming it. I'm like, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I could use some, and uh, you right. know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, but all, all we got to do is let scripture manifest why itself. Do, why do people say that you can't, unless they black can't speak in churches, you don't learn it there, God gives it to you. So, like, I'm, I have a friend who said, well, I, was like, I was asking her about, you know, speaking certain things. I was like, well, uh, she said, you learn it. You don't learn it. It's God, it's God gives it to you. You don't learn it. To speak in tongues. So I'm, so, I'm like, I don't know. Nick and Dave just told you. Yeah. That they prime you up. Yes. So you know what they mean by prime you up? So they sit down and say, they say, sit down and say, speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that's, that'll say, say. A word over and over and over. Yeah. And then say it real fast. Right. Say, Say, bah. Okay, bah. Say it again. Bah. Say it again. Say it again. Okay. This time try to say it a little faster. Bah, bah, bah. Okay. Say it real fast. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So they prime you up. Is that right? They, they, yeah. they yeah. prime you up. And now, now, <laughs> now. All right. So let's just let scripture. <laughs> okay, so look, Paul says this. Paul says this in verse 6. Now, brother, if I come to you speaking with languages, what shall I profit you except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesy or by... Uh, in other words, I'm, if I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you for revelation, knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except that they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is pipe or what is harp? In other words, everything has a sound. And if you don't know what the sound is, or the sound isn't is indistinct, you'll say, what is this? So a, a way to say it is every time Chris hits a bad note, we know. Whoa. <laughs> right? So if, if, he, if he gets a bad note, then what? It's not distinct. Right. Right, so if, if if we speak in a Pentecostal language and it does us no good, then what good is it? So we have people in this church who speak, they have Pentecostal background. Okay, so, and, and uh, we've talked about this in church, okay? If you have to respect what the scripture says, scripture says you can't speak in that language unless they're interpreted. So where's your interpreter? Right. And we never find, I've never had, I've never, I've seen people speak in tongues, but I've never seen an interpreter. In tw 20 some years of being in this church, I've never seen an interpreter. And look, is this, is there an interpreter here today? Okay. So if, if I speak in a Pentecostal language and nobody understands it, what, what good is it doing? What good does it do anybody other than Except for, I'm thinking that I'm better than you because I can. But you have to be careful because if, if, if you're taught that speaking in tongues shows that you're saved. Mm -hmm. Yes, that part. And you're born again. That you have a full that you have of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's their claim. They say that's the evidence. That is the evidence of having the Holy Spirit yes. is the speaking yes. in tongues. But that's not what scripture says. That's not yeah. what scripture says. And not only that, if I'm being told that lie, I'm never looking to be saved anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to believe what? I'm already saved. Already saved. Mm -hmm. So any gospel, any message on salvation is just going to go over my head because look, yeah. I speak in tongues. So what are you saying? This is not mess my, my, yeah. this message is not for me. So it's dangerous in that. Yeah. Yeah. If they're teaching that, that speaking. Is, hmm? What do you mean that's deep? Because you're actually shedding light on some of the questions I had about people speaking tongues. Well, all we have to do is read scripture, right? <laughs> there it is, Pastor. I'm, I'm reading scripture. I'm learning it now. Where does it, this, this, so in the 1900s, this is starting to happen. And can you imagine the early 1900s? I mean, I bet every night it doubled. Boom, 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 boom. And then everybody's running around speaking in tongues and we're saved. And, oh, it's cult-like. 
Yeah, no, that's not faith. That's you believe in the gift that happens. It's not in the God that you open your mouth and start urging and saying, you walk in the tongue and I see a relationship. You need evidence. Right. You know, faith. They're like a breeze. <laughs> yeah, so I so, so in this church, can you imagine how crazy it was? In Corinthians, the church of Corinthians, people who had the gift of languages were just going around just talking. Probably that's what it sounded like, gibberish to everybody. Okay? Because nobody could understand it. What would he say? I don't know. I think he said, you know, God's going to bless this church or whatever. So Paul addresses it. And if Paul addresses it in this church, why can't we address it here? Because that's what it is. I mean, so like, okay, so we'll go back to the people in this church, in the, in the church who speaks in tongues. If, here's the thing. If, if you have a problem with what we teach, come to Bible study. Amen. We'll just go over scripture. Okay, so if, if you've been infected with false doctrine, and you won't, and you say, well, and you say well, to yourself, well, I believe in speaking in tongues. Okay, well, come on. If you believe in it, sh shall not your faith stand up to the Bible? Oh. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. That's right. They're not here tonight. They're still here. They're not here tonight. No. I mean, isn't isn't your are, are we here to just say, what, what have I learned and what is truth? So let, let's go on a little further. And, and I knew it was going to take two to three weeks to go through this chapter, but I'm okay with it. Uh, so verse 10 and 11 there, uh, Jennifer, please. So Paul is saying there's, there has to be some significance to this language. It has to benefit somebody. See what he's saying? There, there are, it may be, so many different kinds of voices in the world, and none are without what? Significance. So Pentecostal tongues, what significance it has? I don't know what they're saying. I don't, I don't have an interpreter. So if you come to this church and you start speaking in tongues, what are you saying? What did you say? Are you cursing the church? Cursing me? That part. Huh? That's that's I don't what, understand. That's what, so what, what? we what? That's what we're meaning when people speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's not biblical. Based on our God we need to. There's no international no reason for you to speak on But we understand and we're sensitive to the fact that they might have been primed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you're primed and this is what it's usually it's usually when the emotion is high in the church that they start speaking. Huh? You can all I see the will turn. And you get that grin on your face. Like, because <laughs> I know. I, I love watching that. I'm yeah. Ready to keep going. Because I'm trying to do it without doing it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Yeah, I'm doing it without doing it. It's okay. So, because, I mean, we, we don't want to alienate these people. Since I grew up as a Baptist, I, I thought that unless I was water baptized, I wasn't saved. But then I got baptized as an infant, and I didn't change. But then when I asked God into my life, I changed. So the whole doctrine of, of now what I was taught from a kid, the Baptist now, I have to review this because what else have you not told me? And then I, then I looked at all the 
booklets that they give you, pamphlets that they give you, and everything that they tell you is about baptism. Mm -hmm. So I was indoctrinated into this religion, which wasn't exactly, you know, the truth. Wasn't truth. So, all right, so look, let's look. It says, um, verse 12. Wes, did you, did you, 12 and 13? Yeah. yeah. Even so, you, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Okay, so they were zealous for what? Spiritual gifts. He says, if you're zealous for a spiritual gift, seek one that edifies the church, right? That, that will be a benefit to the church, right? Wherefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, and my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is. And so that anybody who comes in this church to speak in tongues, for anybody, for all the rest of us, is a fruit we have no idea what you said. We are clueless. And you probably clueless too. Do we beat you up? No. Do we look at you and say, pretty sure that that's a false doctrine and you've been led astray. And we pray that you come to Bible study and learn, but you won't come. And even if you do come, you won't listen. So what do we do? Well, we believe that that Belief in itself won't keep you from heaven unless you believe that speaking in tongues is your guarantee. So now we question whether or really not are you saved? Because you can let us stray. You can be led astray saying that speaking in tongues now. In fact, you're probably looking at the rest of us saying none of the rest of y'all speak in tongues because y'all probably heathens. Right. Right. I've never been able to speak in tongues except for just not right now when I just Pride myself. <laughs> but they also say that you have to. When, when I spoke to people, I said it's a gift. You, you know, God gives this, and then they're like, "Well, you have to desire it." <laughs> okay. All right. The next uh, four four verses there, uh, Ladybug. So, all right. I'm not. I'm not desiring that gift. Me either. <laughs> What does that say? 15. 15. 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what Thou say. And, and, well, that's fine. In other words, I can't say amen to what you just said. Because I don't know what right. you said. It's because I don't know if you cursed me or you cussed me out or right. whatever. Right. <laughs> so, for those of you who know people who speak in tongues, the Bible says, number one, they can't speak it unless they have an interpreter. And the very fact that they speak it in your presence without an interpreter, Say they're there. That's an incorrect use of gifts, which they don't have, because they really don't. They're not really speaking in a language, so they don't have the gift of tongues or languages. They have the gift of gibberish, gibberish, <laughs> predicated on them by Pentecostal. So you're saying false teaching, which equates out to Another gospel. Another gospel. Which equates to devils in the midst. Devils in the midst. Oh, they Yeah, when people speak in tongues, the devil is here. Oh. Have, have you ever, and, and I'm just going to say this, have you ever watched when a Catholic Pope dies hmm. and, and, and that gibberish that they speak? It is so satanic that you just got to be careful. It's like a ah, 
I remember when the last boat died and they're singing and whatever. I'm like, man, this is, has nothing to do with the holiness of God. This is like some demonic realm of, and, and, and my chills all over me. I said, man, let me turn this off before I get sucked into this. <laughs> they're, they're not celebrating or they're not in tune with God himself. They're not, this is about that man, their uh, God on earth. So you know, the Bible talks about false gods and our worship of false gods. So they that's what it is. They can't worship of a false god. They can't. It's not of the spirit that we know. And we're designed to have more relationship with. So it has to be the opposite of that. But it should make you feel good. So 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 don't be afraid of anybody who speaks in service. They have no power from God. They have they're, they're, they have nothing. Right? But remember. Where does this begin? Where does the whole Pentecostal charismatic movement begin? Okay. Prior to this, there was none of this stuff. Right? But how big is the Protestant charismatic movement now? It's huge. Right? So how many people now believe that they're saved simply because they speak in a... So how many people are, are the Pentecostal leading to hell? And who's behind it? What do you mean it's crazy? It's crazy. It's a, Satan has found a way to make even Christianity do his works. Oh my God. It's, 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 yeah. So, let's continue this a little bit more. Um, the next verse, uh, Chris. For well, thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. And verse 18. I thank my God I speak in tongues more than ye all. So, or languages, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 19, Chris. <laughs> you can't leave him hanging. Like Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also that 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Right, or, or, or an unknown language. language. Yeah. So if I'm speaking Korean right now, 10,000 words will not do you any good, yeah. right? But it's better to speak five words in a language that you understand, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So what would I say? Pentecostals, have been taught to believe that that Pentecostal speaking the tongues language is a special language unto God. Okay. And they they simply believe that for some reason it gives them power and salvation, which is unbiblical. And Paul's addressing it right now. So the same problem that and, and he's, he's actually, he's not talking about the Pentecostal movement. He's actually talking about a language, right? So Paul's not even addressing Shabba Ranks type of language. <laughs> no, he's not even addressing that. No, he's not addressing that kind of speech. He's addressing the actual gift of speaking in an audible, understandable language. He didn't even got to where we're at. Uh, he probably turned over the grace, seeing how far we done, the, you know, how far we've gone away from where he where he taught. And so we have look. As we approach the last days, there'll be more and more deception. You have to be the only the only shield that you have is the word of God. Amen. That's the only that's the only shield the only protection you have is we read it. We interpret it, we understand it, we see Satan, we see Satan, we see what you're doing. Yeah. Right? Amen. So, the 
Next time you hear somebody speak in tongues, don't fear. When I'm talking about tongues, I'm not saying the language, I'm talking about Pentecostal tongues. Don't fear. Don't fear. I mean, you, you could feel, huh? You feel sorry for them. Okay. I want to go ahead a minute. I just want to tap a little bit, shake them out of it. Can't. Okay. Can't. Yeah, you can't because they're 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 remember speaking Pentecostal tongue lifts them up. So they're already thinking that I'm greater than you because I speak in. Yeah. So in order to get them to understand it, that that's a false elevation of themselves, you gotta knock them down. And they're not gonna let you knock them down. Because if you don't speak in Pentecostal tongues, you're beneath me. So how are you going to tell me anything? Right. If, if, if you watch TV, if you watch TV, uh, and 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 TD Jakes is good at doing this. He'll teach. He'll teach. He'll teach. He'll teach. He'll teach. And every once in a while, he'll sneak in. Shabaranks. Yeah. And he'll start teaching again. Mm-hmm. Why does he do? Why does he, why does he throw that in there? He's appealing to people in the crowd. Yeah, he's appealing to what? Pentecostals. He's appealing to the crowd. He's appealing to those people who've been taught. And and and, and he's elevating himself and he's saying well, he doesn't do it a lot, but he does it enough. Right? Any 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 questions? Because we're well, the people I know in this group that like try to speak that say try to speak their tongue, they don't do it as I'm better than you. I think they do. Like Well, the, script, the, the scripture says that yeah. a person who speaks in tongues edifies himself. Yeah, yeah. So even though that they, they even, even though they, they it, it looks like they're not edifying themselves or lifting themselves up because they're doing it in, the, in a humble way. The Bible says that's not what's truly behind it. What's truly behind it is they're elevating themselves. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. In other words, they're saying, I have a gift that you don't have. Right. So, any more questions? So, shouldn't you, um, if somebody speaks in tongues and you can't correct them in something or whatever, you should pray in their head to bind up anything that's in you. Period. Whether it's your mother, your wife, whoever. Because, you know, God ain't about your feelings. He's about protecting you. And the enemy is pouring out. If people can't see what's going on, they're crazy. Like, he, I mean, Satan throws out here. He's killing, I mean, he's making sure that you can't even, he'll snatch your kids from you. Literally. And the church ain't doing nothing about it. I see the world standing up because they don't want nobody taking their kids. But the church ain't saying nothing. They just quiet. Well, the church ain't the church. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's only a few churches. Yeah, yeah. Just, just in this country, and I live alone. We also can't co-sign either. So, are you saying that they're calling themselves, saying and praying on, over, or about you? They won't. They're gonna get in their name from you. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> I'm not co signing no message. So, as we learn and you know the truth about what is transpiring in your presence, right? You, you can't co sign that stuff. Okay? But you, yeah, I'll walk away. You're, you're on your own. <laughs> well, okay. the Bible illuminates false teaching uh, and deception. And all we did was, re- all we did was, re- was read. read. Say what it says and accept it to what it says. So anybody in the, that comes to this church and speaks in tongues, Pentecostal. See, I'm trying to show the difference. Pentecostal, not a language. Pentecostal yeah. tongues, which is nothing, <laughs> right? If they do that in our church, we know automatically that. First of all, you should have had a. Why are you speaking without an interpreter? So right now we already know that you're out of order. 
right now we know that you're out of order because you're sick. And this gift that you think that you have, all it's doing is, although you look as humble as you can, you can put your head down. It elevates you. It doesn't edify us because we have no idea what you said. So, so because it doesn't build us up as a church, it just brings attention to you. Now you can go, you can speak in tongues and run and go in, in that room over there. It still edifies you because it brings the focus to you. And you're not doing anything for anybody in church. It's all you're doing is for yourself. So how do we address it? We don't amen. I mean, we, we understand that there's people who have been taught a lot of things that are wrong. We, 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 we hope that you come to Bible study and learn this stuff. But if you don't, and if you and you know, and, and if, if you want to get deep into it, if you if, if you talk to a person and they say, you know, I'm saved, I speak in tongues. That's no indication of salvation. Because you're not speaking in tongues. I say you're speaking in, in a demonic language. That's what I would say. All right, so are we going to beat people up who come in here and do that? No, because we ask for the worst of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Did we ask for the worst of the worst? Yeah. So what, yeah. what kind do we get? The worst of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just have to. <laughs> we ask God for bring us the people. So we're trying to save people that other churches don't have time. Or other churches are misleading. Man, you, you have no idea how many pastors are just. Whoa. All right, so who wants to pray? We once again thank you, Father, for the ability to come and discuss your word, edify us as a body, as your body. We thank you for the information help us to do what we are supposed to do yes. and help us to help someone else do what they're supposed to do by yes. telling them what you say yes. and what you say and not what we say you say yes. to read the scriptures for itself and only for what it says and accept it that way and then go forth from there help us to be strong in your word so that when we hear error we recognize it and we act in accordance to your will and deal with it so we're thankful we are blessed we are uh, 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 smarter we're stronger and it's all because of you so we be with us now that we finish this study, that we continue on, on our own, to solidify it more in us, and we thank you, and we love you, and we praise your name, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, no pantry this week, we do have a delivery Friday, a funeral for Dave's brothers tomorrow. Uh, anything else?